Look like uh, looks like everything's set up. Uh, I wanted to do a quick video. What I plan to do in talking about the lecture slides is basically <clears throat> go over in short segments. You know, five to ten minutes. Go over certain sections of the uh, uh, discussions, the briefing charts, so that uh, you don't have to sit through one big uh, video. And plus, it'll give me an opportunity to edit and make sure the video uh, works and all that good stuff. Just because this is the first time I'm really using videos to capture lectures, so I mess up. Okay. Anyways, so you'll see in the first uh, week what we wanted to talk about was an overview of software engineering in general. Um, and uh, again, for the purposes of that, what your responsibilities are going to be it was at some point in life, leading these projects, managing these projects, interacting with these projects, serving as an analyst on these projects, becoming a tester of these pro of these of the software being developed. So, you need to acquire the basic concepts and the terminology, and be able to de demonstrate you understand the processes and the life cycles that we go through when we develop software. So that's what this intro. Uh, packet is all about is you know what is software engineering what's this software uh, development life cycle the SDLC and then what are some different development methodologies it depends on where you go work there's going to be different they're going to implement the organization uh, is going to implement the software development life cycle differently relative to where you go work um, and of course that'll be dependent upon the types of systems and software that they're building so I think my strategy is going to be the first video that we're going to talk about today is just what is software engineering and then we'll have a video for what is the SDLC and then what are the different development methodologies okay alright so basically just jumping into software engineering uh, that term came about in the late 60s uh, there was a conference a NATO uh, conference being held and uh, what's funny is you think about software today and you think about software back in the 60s. Um, well, I wasn't around, but, you know, what, what they were trying to achieve at this conference was uh, this software uh, beast. Uh, why is it so difficult? Uh, why does it take so long to build? Why are we having so, many pro so much problems with uh, building software? It costs so much. It's hard to manage. There's a lot of errors. We don't find all of the software errors. Uh, during development, some errors escape into operations, and so, you know, they basically had a meeting of the minds and brought everybody together to try to understand and get control of what is this software thing? Why is it such a problem? So, that's really was uh, early 70s and whatnot uh, when we started talking about software engineering, uh, and we'll we'll get into really what that means here in a minute, but um, that's really when we started uh, talking about it. Now, since then. Uh, of course, the systems have become a lot more complex. <clears throat> We're actually building uh, systems a lot differently. Uh, systems are actually uh, being, or systems are being integrated into all types of embedded applications. Everything you look at today pretty much has a uh, software component to it. And so software is everywhere. Um, we also don't have this concept where you have one brainiac that's sitting in the dungeon somewhere writing code um, now software is being built by entire teams uh, some code is being automatically generated um, so you know software is, has, has evolved drastically since the uh, since the 60s and the 70s and guess what we still have these same problems uh, they're slightly different of course different types of problems but they're still still in the same uh, ball fields as far as it still takes us a while to build software still costs a lot we still can't find all the problems before we go into operation so uh, anyways we're still experiencing these, these challenges um, however what we have done a lot better is uh, been able to manage uh, a lot of these types of problems a lot of these types of costs a lot of these types of schedule problems uh, we've been able to manage it more effectively and so that's really going to be important for you all um, in your roles that you're going to serve on these software development projects so so anyway some things to just consider I don't know your all's uh, involvement with software and background with software but just give you a, a little idea of software what am I talking about 
Well, let's first talk about some of the difficulties that we have with software. Well, number one, it's everywhere, as I said earlier. Very complex, very easy to modify software. It's very easy to have software do whatever you want. It's nothing physical. I don't have to solder things together, and so, or I don't have to bolt things together. And by bolting something together, it actually only moves in a few dimensions. No, software, you can make it do whatever you want it to do. And so that makes things very complex, easily changeable. Software is also, it takes a lot of people to build, so it's very labor intensive. Software is a very long lifespan. Uh, software does not deteriorate like hardware does. And so software that we've been running in the 60s uh, is still running today. Um, and so we are challenged with, our, uh, we have opportunities or challenges in the sense of the hardware that that software ran on back in the 60s is no longer. So now we have to take that code, that software, and form fit it to the new hardware platforms. And so um, what we're trying to kind of communicate here is, number one, you're going to find out real quickly, there is no silver bullet. There is no recipe to say, oh, this is exactly how you do software. Repeat this process every time and no issues, no problems. You always hit schedule. You always hit budget. There's no silver bullet. Okay. There's a lot of things you have to manage, a lot of balls you have to juggle. And, uh, and that's what we're really going to be focusing on here in this class, okay? By the way, the Mythical Man Month by Fred Brooks, yes, it was written back in, well, it was, it was written in the 70s, but it was written about a project that was built in the 60s. That's going to be something important for us to read in this class, because if you do anything with software, then it is always um, inferred that you understand the Mythical Man Month. You'll, you'll hear references made about the Mythical Man Month. You'll have questions to you in the trenches on your teams about the Mythical Man Month. So it's something you'll want to be, become familiar with. Okay, And it doesn't require a computer scientist to become familiar with it. So, All right, something I stole from uh, Roger Pressman's book, um, a generic book about software engineering in general. It just talks about what is software. Now, the one thing, few things I want to, you can read the slide, but... What I want to make sure we're all on the same page is when we talk about software, we're talking about more than just code, just the program, just the code. We're talking much more than that. Software consists of a lot of things. And so software, um, before you get code, actually has to be born via an idea, a problem, a challenge. Somebody has to say or have a need that eventually will turn into a software product or the, or the need to have uh, some kind of software application. And so at the very beginning, when you have this concept or this idea, that concept gets you know documented some way. It either gets written down, it becomes modeled, or maybe you build a video about what the concept is. That artifact right there becomes part of the software product. Okay. And so as we go through the life of software, it goes from concept all the way to death, meaning we retire the software application. There are products that get generated um, during that entire lifespan of the software. And so we call those our engineering artifacts that represent the software. So I want to make sure you get out of the camp of software is just code. It's much more than that. It, it, it consists of the concept uh, documentation, it con consists of the software architecture, the software design, the actual software code, it consists of the software tests, it consists of the software user manuals and documentation, how-to guides. And so make sure you get out of the camp that software is just code, it's much more than that, and you have to manage all of those products, okay? Uh, software engineers, well, what's involved, who's involved uh, in building software? So you have various disciplines. You have, definitely have software engineers. You have other types of analysts as well. You've got disciplined engineers. So you have your mechanical, your electrical, and whatnot. Um, you have your human resources folks. You have your accounting folks. You have your leadership folks. Uh, so it might be your upper management. So you have all types of, of people and characteristics that are involved on the project. And so all of those people have to be led as well as managed. Okay? So it's just not a whole bunch of software weenies in the, in the room, and those are the only folks that are building software, and that, that's not true, okay? You have to get your mind out of that camp as well, okay? 
And then uh, Pressman talks about what are the steps that you take in building the software. That's what we call the software development life cycle. And so it's a series of phases that we go through whenever we build software. Some organizations go through these phases really quick. Some organizations it takes forever to get through these phases. Um, and it depends on the type of system that we're building. Uh, you might not spend a whole lot of time in certain phases. Uh, so we'll, we'll get into that. Um, and so let's get some formal definitions down. Uh, what IEEE uh, consider software engineering, it's the application of a systematic, disciplined, and quantifiable approach. Okay, so this is something we're going to key off of um, a lot because we want to make sure the activities that we're doing whenever we're building software that we are taking that the activities that we're taking have these types of characteristics that it's systematic that it's disciplined that it's quantifiable okay um, I think I talked enough about what is software if you're just wondering it's more than just code I think I talked about that enough so uh, I'm gonna come back to that definition though um, about being quantifiable, systematic, and disciplined. I'm going to come back to that, so keep that on your mind for a second. We're going to end on it. So, The types of software that we are talking about, we're talking about system software. This is the type, this is like your operating systems, okay? like your Windows 10, your Linux. This is the, the types of software that actually serves other software applications. Then you have real-time software, and that's where it actually controls, monitors, and analyzes whatever responds to real-world events. Okay, so it's a real-time system is constrained by time. So like the uh, software that controls fighter jets or airplanes, or what, th that's real-time software because it has to respond within uh, certain time periods. Okay? At versus like a business software, if we're running a, an accounting software package, it doesn't have to respond uh, in certain time frames, right? I mean, you want it to be quick. You don't want your accountants being upset that the software didn't, that it takes forever to execute. But, uh, but it's not critical. Uh, there's no requirements that it makes a calculation uh, within 10 milliseconds versus some type of flight software for an aircraft where certain commands have to be issued and responded to within maybe a 10 millisecond uh, time frame. So a little different real-time software, business software, embedded software. Embedded software is the type of software that's like in your watches, your refrigerators, your toaster ovens, I guess, your vehicles. Uh, they basically have a very small footprint. When I say footprints, a footprint in the computing world, I'm talking about computer memory, uh, computer data throughput, how much data you're pushing through. It's very small. So think about the software that might be in your refrigerator. It's not a desktop machine. It doesn't have a whole bunch of memory. It doesn't have a big uh, processor in it. So embedded software has to be very lean, has to operate efficiently. Uh, then you have your application software. You have a concept of open source software where it's sort of free. Uh, but basically, it's an application that it's out there on the Internet, and anybody can download it and use it. Anybody can download it, edit it, means modify it, and then re-upload it so that everybody can benefit from those updates as well. And then a the last category to wrap your mind around the types of software we're talking about, legacy software. Again, I mentioned earlier about software that was built in the 60s and we're still using today. That's legacy software where organizations do not, I mean, the software works for them. They don't, there's no need to change it. And so it's just been around forever. And so organizations like to modify things versus building everything from the ground up. Okay. And then we'll go to our last slide for this video, and it's a challenge. What I want you to spend a, a couple minutes thinking about is this is a pause and reflect moment. So think about something that you're very familiar with, something that might be a hobby of yours. You like to paint, or you like to go hiking, or you like to work on cars, or you like to build, whatever. Just think about something that you're, you're familiar with. And then two slides ago, when we introduced software engineering, we talked about that software engineering was a systematic, disciplined, and quantifiable approach to building software. Okay, Fancy words, right? Buzzwords. You throw around them all day long at dinner parties. However, what do they mean? Okay, Let's put some meaning behind it. And so what I want you to think about is what are those 
characteristics mean to you relative to the topic that you picked. So I put here on the right hand side, I like to build model cars. Um, we actually don't, but it was an example I could think of. But uh, So what does systematic mean when we're building model cars? Well, we have a plan. Uh, we first develop our plan and then we execute to that plan, meaning I lay out all my pieces, I put together a plan on how I'm going to build that model car, and then we go through the, okay, step one, here's the, I'm going to put the frame together, I'm going to glue the wheels on, or I'm going to, so systematic in that respect means there's some kind of plan that gets developed first and then we execute to that plan. What does discipline mean in that respect? Well, there are proven approaches on how you should glue tires on a model car for example well we're going to follow these proven approaches versus just taking some haphazard uh, approach uh, to gluing on the tires uh, it's an approach that is repeatable so that's what we would mean from a disciplined what does discipline mean in, when we're building model cars I, I, i'm not trying to be silly i'm just we're trying to put some meaning behind these buzzwords okay because because it's important uh, when we start talking about managing a software development project and we want to take a disciplined approach and you're going to be sitting there like okay what does that mean well we need to start formulating our opinion or our understanding of what these things mean and then the last is a quantifiable um, characteristic that how we develop software it's a quantifiable approach well for this example I'm building a model car a quantifiable approach means I can measure my progress I can measure the quality of that model car that I'm building okay so spend a few minutes think about you don't have to write anything down if you want to uh, that's better uh, you can you don't have to turn anything in I just want you to think about the definition of software engineering the three characteristics that really make it up systematic discipline and quantifiable and I want you to relate it to something that you're very familiar with okay alright that was part one stay tuned for part two of learning module one